Hi students, this is Alex here. In this video, we will discuss about the procedure how to use the method of undetermined coefficients to solve a differential equations. Suppose if there is a differential equation of the general form with constant coefficients, we have d power n y by d x power n plus some constant k1 into d power n minus 1 y by d x power n minus 1 plus constant k2 into d power n minus 2 y by d x power n minus 2 plus dot 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 till kn into y equal to some function. Now we will write the auxiliary equation in terms of m that is m power n plus k1 m power n minus 1 plus k2 m power n minus 2 plus dot 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 till kn and we equate to 0 and we get the values of m. After solving we get the values of m as m1 m2 m3 till mn. Let's consider a second order differential equation. Suppose if it is a d square plus b d plus c into y equal to some function. By solving this we get two values for m. Suppose in the first case if m1 and m2 are two different values then we write the complementary function as c1 e power m1x plus c2 e power m2x. Suppose if these two values are equal m1 equal to m2 which is equal to m then we write complementary function as c1 plus c2x into e power mx. Suppose if we get an imaginary root that is alpha plus or minus i beta then the complementary function is e power alpha x into c1 cos beta x plus c2 sin beta x. So these are the three possible cases. After writing the complementary function, we have to write the solution set. If it is the first case, then the solution set will be what are the term with the constant c1 and c2 that is e power m1x and e power m2x. So we write the solution set e power m1x and e power m2x. Suppose if it is the second case, then the solution set will contain the elements with c1 after multiplying this e power mx. So e power mx and another one is c2x e power mx. So with c2 we have x e power mx. Suppose if it is a third case then the solution set will contain the term with c1 is e power alpha x into cos beta x and e power alpha x into sin beta x. So this is the way we write the solution set. So first we have to write the auxiliary equation. After solving we get values for m. Based on the values of m we write the complementary function. Then we write the solution set in each case. It depends upon the solution of m. Now we have to check the function given on the right hand side. So the right hand side we have x and we have to check whether this x is a part of the solution set or not. Check if x belong to the solution yes. This x may be an exponential function or it may be 
a trigonometric function sin x or cos x or it may be algebraic function like algebraic function x per n. Suppose if this x does not belong to the solution set S, so we take each case if e per ax does not belong to a s then we have to assume the particular integral as some constant into e power ax suppose if it is sin or cos if sin ax does not belong to s then we assume the particular integral to be c3 sin ax plus c4 cos ax. In the same way if cos ax does not belong to s still we assume it in the same way c3 cos ax plus c4 sin ax. Always the sin ax and cos ax will come together. And suppose e power ax of the second case here we are taking e power mx. If that does not belong to the solution, still we assume the particular integral as c3 e power ax. And suppose if the algebraic function x power n does not belong to the solution set S, then we assume the particular integral as c3 plus c4 x plus c5 x square keep on going till x power n with some constant here. For example, if it is x instead of x power n, if it is x, then in this case the particular integral will be c3 plus c4 x. Suppose x power n we have as x square then the particular integral will be c3 plus c4 x plus c5 x square. Suppose if it is x cube, then the particular integral will be c3 plus c4 x plus c5 x square plus c6 x cube. So this is the way we take the particular integral if it is algebraic. So till now we have discussed when the solution set does not contain the x which is given on the right hand side of the differential equation. So how to assume the particular integral? Suppose if the term belong to the s. So here when it does not belong to s we assumed like this. Suppose if it belongs to s then we assume the same term but we multiply by x. So let's consider here suppose if this e power ax of the right hand side of the equation belong to the solution set then we assume the particular integral as c3 e power ax but we multiply by x in the beginning. The same thing here suppose if sin ax belong to s usually the sin ax and cos ax combined usually comes together. So when this belongs automatically the solution set will also have cos ax. So we write the usual thing and we multiply by x. Similarly if it is cos ax it will come along with sin ax together. So we write the particular integral and multiply by x. Because if cos ax belong to the solution set the sin ax also will belong to the solution set. So when I write the particular integral, we will multiply by x. The same way, when if it is, we can follow for algebraic, but this algebraic will not come as a part of the solution set. So here we can see either it is e power m1x or m2x or it is a combination of sin beta x and cos beta x. So either exponential or it is the trigonometric term. Usually algebraic will not come. So we discussed what will happen to the particular integral if 
the given function belong does not belong to s and if it belong to s so even here suppose if x power n belong to s then we multiply the entire term by x by procedure then we continue the problem once writing the particular integral depends upon the question whether the terms x belong does not belong to s or belong to s we write the particular integral after that after getting the particular integral we have to find its derivative that is first derivative then second derivative then third derivative and whatever the derivative required depends upon the question and we have to substitute in the equation after that we have to compare the coefficients of the term on both the sides so we have to compare coefficients on both sides to find the constants what are the constants we assumed c3 c4 c5 whatever constant we assumed after getting the constant we write the complete solution that is y equal to complementary function plus particular integral after finding the constant we can get the full particular integral by substituting complementary function and particular integral we get the complete solution for the given differential equation this is how we solve using the method of undetermined coefficients there are some special cases where we get where the value of m may be a single value or repeated value like this so if it is a repeated value we have to multiply with not only with x but with x power 1 or x power 2 or x power 3 depends upon how many time it is repeated suppose if the value m repeated once then we multiply by x power 1 that is x suppose the value m repeated twice then we multiply by x square if it is a three values so m value three equal values then we multiply by x cube so all the special cases will be clearly understand by solving the variety of problems so this completes the entire procedure for finding the complete solution using the method of undetermined coefficients